Hey. Yo, hey. Hi. What's up? Hey, everyone. <laughs> Don't mind ebony darkness dementia. What's that? Right? <laughs> Raven way. Yeah, that one. Thank you. <laughs> the darkest timeline of some, prep, some preps walk by. I stuck my middle fingers up at them. <sighs> my world is so great. We are <laughs> back <laughs> with the natural ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> this time we're into themes of the brain. Yes. Um. So. <laughs> oh DM, my DM. Mm -hmm. Take mm -hmm. over for a bit. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm just gonna let you run with that. That was fun. All right. So... <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> uh, yeah. Dreams of the brave back at last. Uh, I mean, in our normally scheduled time, but, uh, yeah, so last time, uh, some fun things happened. Did anyone want to do a, uh, a recap? Yeah. Oh, sure. oh yeah, go on, Tom. I need to hear more okay, of this voice. well. <laughs> I'm just going to mute little, my mic again. I, I feel like you need to be a little louder doing the emo voice, though. <laughs> Um, some more time. Oh Hello. my god. So, <laughs> last session of uh, Dreams of the Brave, we uh, finished some of our shopping at Cataract's <sighs> shop. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, no one let. Uh, Gertie steal anything and they were very anti the thievery <clears throat> and uh it was honestly a bit uh, it, it it hurt me where my heart would be uh so, uh, well, during uh, more shopping, we, um, well, not we, but Shimmer, you know, the, oh, I'm so happy, one, uh, mm. went over to the governor, and, um, <laughs> <laughs> tried to, uh, tried to have her sign a uh, diary of uh, sorts or you know like a book with a pen <laughs> and um you know making friends and all and so she actually made an appointment with the go governor um for all of us to discuss our needs and <clears throat> wants. <sighs> well, I feel like none of this is useful. <laughs> Gertie took out her box or a chest that she wanted to explore. You know, she likes exploring chests. No, no innuendo. Um, so we went in there. It was really tight. And um, there was a certain trap and... Uh, potions inside of this I think um, and we got to know more about um, we found some you know, books and plans that we went through but didn't make sense of course so kind of try and find something more Interesting, this dark, dark world. Um, Gertie, uh, <laughs> opened up a trap that she hoped for to be a, uh, 
were filled with treasure, but no, they were dead bodies. And, well, the mummy, you know, mummies are really cool. They're kind of dead, but not really. So yeah, there was a mummy, and <laughs> Gertie got hit, and cursed, of course. She wasn't cursed before at all. And uh, and she got out of there thanks to um, Riz. thanks to Riz. It was very helpful, and like other people. <clears throat> And uh, it's kind of you know where we ended, but isn't isn't really all of this coming certain? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> That's the thanks place. for coming for tonight. That's all. That, yeah, we can't talk that. <laughs> Our new series. Tom just <laughs> recaps whatever happened last session like that. <laughs> I, I, Thank you, I guess. I, I, I don't know how to feel just in general now. This this was an experience. Oh my god. Oh. None of us are allowed to do recaps anymore. No, no, we can't we can't have that happen every week. We can't. <laughs> the, the, the sheer unadulterated sexual energy will get us kicked off first. <laughs> <laughs> Take it off, please. Yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah. Tom, take a, a GM inspiration. <laughs> Not to necessarily encourage that kind of behavior, but. So, yes, after getting Gertie out of uh, the trap inside of Gertie's box, um. Uh, was determined that uh, uh, she was cursed and could not regain hit points and it's about time for that meeting with the governor so you all kind of started heading that way so we'll pick up uh, there so you're the uh, you know the marketplace of portal um, it's kind of just a you know to kind of refresh anyone who doesn't remember, or maybe you're 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 new. It's um, a few square blocks, and it's kind of a courtyard that's been cleared out for the most part. Uh, they've kind of walled off the streets in between the buildings along the perimeter, and it's well fortified at that. And then it's all s kind of centered around an old tower. Uh, it looks to be in good condition, and you all kind of make your way to the spell exchange where Shimmer had set up the meeting with the governor. Excuse me. Uh, and yeah, you. Uh, it doesn't take you long to get there. You kind of walk over. It's, like I said, it's not a very large area. It's mostly just kind of tents and stuff like that. And some of the residents of Portal, some of the wealthier ones, have uh, some shops inside the buildings along the perimeter. But for the most part, those buildings are kind of shut down to the uh, public. And uh, you find yourself at the Spell Exchange, one of the uh, few um, buildings. Uh, it's not just a temporary tent kind of thing. And you walk in and it's uh, it's a lot of books and things like that. You're seeing a lot of people dress like perhaps they deal in the arcane um kind of gather together and it l looks almost more like a social club uh there's drinks and things like that and as you walk in um kind of a young man begins to approach you dressed in uh kind of some some light clothing does have a sword but you're also seeing some wands and whatnot on him um and as he approaches uh, you see an older woman um i guess not really that old more just middle-aged uh brown hair kind of got some it's kind of graying a little bit green eyes um human 
human, yes. And do, 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 let me pull up that description. Uh, yeah, so it's a short, short brown hair, kind of olive skin. She's about five foot two, so she's a little uh, on the shorter side. Uh, and she kind of begins to approach, and she waves the young man off, and just uh, says, "I believe they're here to see me." So, um, I met Shimmer earlier. I'm Callisto. I'm the governor <coughs> of Portal, and uh, I understand that. You all are some of the brave that have kind of been tasked to find a new uh, settlement. For yes, we are. Alliance. Well, then, um, I've been trying to meet as many of the brave as I can. You know, you're obviously, uh, Portal's a kind of a place of safe haven. You can't stay here long term, but for the short term, we could do things for you. Um, if ever in a. Did I? Bob? Bad position. Shrimp on the barbie. Gavna. Uh. <laughs> Tom, please don't leave your hood up like that the entire session. <laughs> you're you're dark Kermit right now. Yeah, that was the exact <laughs> reference that Nairi made earlier. Yeah. Just... Um. <laughs> yeah. So she's kind of. Matt, <laughs> looking over the group. Um, this is dirty in character. Uh, yeah, yeah. she's in the she, well. She's in her hood of shame. Mm. Is what she, is. <laughs> she needs a cone of shame, though, for real. Yeah. And just so, one of the things I'm trying to do with uh, some of the brave is kind of show them around and hope you know, kind of get you an understanding of kind of what maybe you should be looking for. Not necessarily something like this, but in the understanding that you kind of have to look for sort of out-of-the-box ideas and kind of unique locations. And so it's going to actually show you um, Portal proper, if that is all right with you. Um, You were talking about uh, letting us stay here short term. How long do you mean? You could, we could swing having a group as small as yours spend the night on occasion. Um, you would have to go through all our security and whatnot, and we will have to do that before you um, go in and take a tour of the, you know, the town, so to speak. But uh, yeah, um, you know, not not frequently. So I, <coughs> kind of more in emergency, kind of that thing if if you need you know safe harbor or something like that well like healing maybe uh we do have some clerics they are in we don't they don't usually come out and wander around during um these hours it's not generally available to the public because we don't have a lot of healing magic to go around sure but, um yes we could bring you to some and uh She's kind of looking over. Yeah, yeah that'd be. <laughs> yeah, like uh, our friend here needs like somebody that can remove curses. Oh, um. Well, I think I think Gink can can provide that service. Um, we'll have to ask her, of course. But of course, like I've got stuff to pay for it. Like, wouldn't expect oh, it for free. Don't worry about that. No. Oh, all right. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll be bringing you in to uh, to the tower here. We're gonna have to go through some security and whatnot. All um, right. What's the security involved? Just you know, checking persons, making sure that there's you know not anything dangerous about you. Things like that, a little divination magic. Okay. Is there anything like we should like leave at the door kind of a vibe? Um, yes, there will be a place for you to check weapons, uh, but they'll be right. between you. Okay. Like, instinctually, Reza's hand kind of curls slightly around, like, not in a threatening way, more just like, you know, like children with their, like, favourite stuffed animal, more that kind of a vibe. 
Uh, is a is a battle weapon. That's uh, how you use it. Is is it? You're familiar. <laughs> oh, that kind of a bad. I thought we talked more. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to cause confusion. Um, <laughs> uh, it, the, that. Yeah, is it your familiar? It's my bad. We will be checking for magic and things of that nature in the search. I mean, okay. Okay. I'm just asking. Well, if it's just a pet, it's fine. If it's a familiar, you'll probably have to leave it outside. That feels weird, but okay. I mean, it's, you know it's worth can... it to get inside, right? Though? I mean, sure, you can, you can, I'm just saying, you can, like, familiars, you can just summon. So, I I mean, I, I'll leave it with you if you want, but I'm just saying that people can summon their familiars. I'm familiar with how it works. <laughs> that's very clever. That is, that is, a, that's a good joke. <laughs> But I would ask you didn't do that as it would be seen as kind of provocative. I, I wasn't planning on it. I'm just pointing it out. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I appreciate uh, the honesty. But yeah. Uh, no. So is that okay with everyone? Sure. And, uh, yeah. Sure. sure. Mac kind of just says, <clears throat> guys, I think I'll just... Um, I'll just hang back in case anything goes down. Can I leave my uh can I leave my stuff with you then, Mac? No offense to the governor here, but like this is my stuff. Oh, oh sure. no, Mac. Sure, yeah, that's fine. Cool. I'm gonna hand over uh the Moontooth spade and my short bow and my darts <laughs> to Mac. <laughs> <laughs> pulling some weapons out of your boots <laughs> well yeah like i pull out like darts from the hand wraps yeah, and you... like various yeah. places. it's not quite the scene in the hobbit but like it's just like the one two like the quiver and the moon's hit spade and the bow and you the take darts. off your hat and just weapons drop out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll i'll hang fairwald from one of the weapons <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, for the sake of clarity, Governor, I've kind of got this in my hand now, and I can't get that out. Put your hand outside the door. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, that's appreciated. Yeah, dwarf stone's a little rare, but um, I think I we'll, promise we'll I will not manage. fire it at anybody. We appreciate that. I can like tie my hand behind my back if you like. I don't think that will be necessary. <laughs> All right. Just an offer. Um, I shove I've... my hand in my pocket, <laughs> like my side, <laughs> my big harem style pants, just like. Uh, real quick, I put both my wands of magic missiles. <laughs> yeah, I have to in uh, my bag of holding, and I also put my wand of the war mage in my bag of holding. I keep my quarter staff, and that's all I have on me. Oh yeah, I've got um... a bag of holding. Shit. Oh well. <laughs> I, I like the vision of giving the stuff to Mac, quite frankly. Uh, I, I keep my stuff with Mac, too. Okay. Yeah, everything, yeah. like, all in the bag, hand over Mac's our adult. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, the closest thing we've got to one. And, uh, Shimmer actually kind of, you know, decides to stay behind as well, but she wants to kind of explore a little bit more and kind of try and Find a sleeping Make bag for two. With people. Yeah, yeah, apparently find a sleeping bag for two. That's her quest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She she'll have uh she'll have dresses to model for you later, uh, Marius. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blinking twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mel needs an adult. <laughs> I do need an adult. So yeah, Shimmer will kind of just go off and 
kind of doing her own thing. And yeah, you guys are um, brought into the tower. Uh, you're taken to the front of it, and the tower looks to be in pretty good shape. It's stone, um, as opposed to what the normal kind of building materials are in uh, uh, the city. This, the you know, the city you're, you're in, the uh, the section of it at least. The buildings are made out of some kind of material that hasn't been able to be replicated since the end of the catastrophe wars, and they're um, kind of uh, they respond well to transmutation magic, and they're highly durable outside of that. This is just seems to be made out of stone, um, and then the door itself is just like solid iron. How and tall is it? The, the tower? tower is probably about eight stories tall. Okay. So it's not huge, but um, it's bigger than kind of most of the surrounding buildings. There are a few buildings that are much taller than it that are a part of their perimeter, but yeah. most most of the perimeter is kind of smaller, like warehouse stuff or um, just kind of small you know, two, three sure. story buildings. Sure. And uh, yeah, there's just a couple of guards at the door. Uh, it is closed. And um, she, uh, Callisto kind of walks up and uh, says something in uh, Celestial. Does anyone speak Celestial? <laughs> Nope. Mm -mm. Okay, so she says something in Celestial, and the door opens. So and... is it Callisto or Callista? Uh, Callisto. Gotcha. Thank you. No problem. And yeah, you kind of go into the tower, and immediately inside, that seems to be kind of a. It's mostly an open room. There's uh, not really much to it. There's just a few guards inside of this room. There's a, a few other steel doors in it, about th three. And you just kind of go in, take an immediate right, and go to one of these doors. She whispers the same word in Celestial, and this door opens. And you go up some stairs. And this happens two more times where you go through a couple more checkpoints. Um, as you kind of walk around and just at every floor, they have another one of these checkpoints. And yes, I try and remember them. Uh, sure. The, uh, the word. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Give me an intelligence check. Trade intelligence. Mm -hmm. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, you remember it. And yeah, you're eventually taken to the uh, third floor. And you're taken to a door that, unlike the other doors you've seen, this uh, seems to be kind of built away from the interior. Uh, you're not sure if it's the original door or not. It's just surrounded by uh, a metal uh, kind of substance that kind of slopes away into the walls. And here there are a few people and they kind of start... Uh, casting some spells and and uh, you know asking you to hand weapons over if you have any weapons or anything like. That. Uh, those of you with bags of holding are asked to leave your bags of holding outside. All of Mac. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
And Gertie, is your your trunk with a uh, Mac as well? Yep. Okay. Cool. So you guys are you're good to go in. Um. You know, uh, it's like when the kids leave all their stuff with mum in the corner of the playground. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh man. Coats, mittens, scarves. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, Sarah, when you watch this back. <laughs> we are not implying that Mac is the group's mum. <laughs> she deserves better. Uh, Mac's so... good enough at making her own bad decisions for that. <laughs> So yeah, uh, this door, this isn't just like a command, the door opens. Um, there's kind of a smaller, looks like teleportation circle next to one of these uh, people that were kind of inspecting you. And they kind of, they do something and it activates. And um, uh, they place a scroll in it, and uh, the scroll disappears. And then the you hear is from the inside the door begins to open, and nice. the door doesn't seem to have any hinges or anything. That you're seeing you can see the outline of this door again, metal, and it just begins to move uh, away from you into this sort of um protruding metal wall and it kind of goes that way for a bit and then slides over to the side and uh you oh. see then a wooden door behind it that uh opens up into what looks to be a well furnished room on the other side and callisto kind of just motions and says after you I will head inside, looking around, trying to take in as much of what's in there as I can. I try to right. go first. <laughs> Fucking try me, bitch. About to get wrecked, son. <laughs> what's my, my 40 foot speed versus your how much, sorry? <laughs> Do, do we need to give a, you a moment, or...? I'm a goblin. I can dash as a bonus action. <laughs> <laughs> Itch. I just, I walk normally into the room, David. Okay. I'll give yeah. these these two some space. <laughs> I'm just gonna step Yeah, I'll moment. just like, oh yeah, I went in first. If Gertie tries to get in first, I'll literally sort of just like, stuck, duck around her and go through. But... Okay. Elias and Marius just sort of look at each other for a second. Yeah. Walk in. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Callisto uh, follows, and you find yourself, like I said, it's a nice, well furnished room. Um, there's bookshelves, it's, there's a desk in here. It looks kind of like a library. Um, there's a smaller. Uh, teleportation circle in here and you see uh, the scroll that had kind of been teleported in uh, has been opened and there's someone who's standing kind of next to it and seems to have there's a few like kind of levers and cranks and whatnot and seems that they've opened the door from this side and you uh, you kind of looking around you see a window and uh, yeah, everyone's passive perception is good enough to just notice there's a window inside <laughs> and see out. And what you're seeing is totally different than the environment that is outside the tower. You're seeing uh, greenery, you're seeing fields. Uh, I was going to say, given, given the path that we've taken within the tower and the size of the tower, would that even be an outside wall? No. That's insane. Right, yeah. Cool. That's nice. Fancy. Nice thing you've got going here. Uh, so... It's been a while since, I, since I've seen that much green. I'm right <laughs> here. I, I mean, 
<laughs> you're, you're not, you're I, not a plant. I playfully elbow Dang. Marius in the thigh wherever I can reach. Can I, can I like sort of observe the, the plants a little more closely? Uh, sure. You can go up to the window and yeah, just sort of like, oh, out. yeah. And so, yeah, there's a few trees here and there and they seem to be very old and very, and, um, just kind of look like oaks. Outside of that, there seems to be a lot of grains planted out here, and you see, you kind of catch to, looking out the window to the right, there's some, something kind of odd, as it looks like almost there's just this immediate line of, like, cloud cover or something. Oh. And <clears throat> uh, then past it, you're seeing uh, wooden buildings, about three stories tall, um, built kind of thin, and at their roofs are kind of domed. Okay. And they just kind of seem to kind of go on. Uh, the horizon, and it takes you a moment to notice, but the horizon is very short. As in it's not as far away as it should be. Yeah, it's very close. So oh, that's all right. Truman, Truman Show style close? Um, I mean, it wouldn't take you long to walk to where you see the horizon. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, no, that's neat. Yeah, um, there's not much I can do from behind glass, so I'll just go back to the group. All right. And, yeah, uh, Callisto says, so this, we're not sure who originally owned this tower or what's inside of it here. We found it this way. And the building itself seems to be highly resistant to uh, change or kind of construction or anything like that. So we have been forced to leave this building here, but we've been able to bring materials in from the outside and do some construction and whatnot. And uh, you kind of pretty quickly get outside. This building itself seems to be a little bit less fortified than uh, the tower outside, but you're still seeing people that are like clearly guards walking around and whatnot. And as you are brought outside, um, this you is see, where the cows are. Yeah, you see, it's basically just a large farm, uh, kind of to the front of you. And then as you kind of walk out into it, you see back behind the house, <laughs> it's not cloud cover, it's nighttime. And there you see, you look into the sky and there's stars, and that's where all these buildings have been built. So, we found a a dimmy plane. Uh, the door we will go through is a portal to it, and so it allows us to sleep here without uh, fear of any kind of interference from the forces of the Dream Spinner, and grow some food and whatnot. We're pretty much at capacity. Like I said, it's we can have people stay here, but feeding more people than we have is difficult in the long term. We've had sure. to kind of send a few of our own brave out to try and find a new location as well. And so, yeah. It's really cool. We appreciate. Um, I don't necessarily mean to show it off or anything, but this, there's going to be ingenuity or there's going to be luck to finding a new place. It's going to be probably somewhat unique. It's unlikely you'll find something else like this. But I just want you to be aware of kind of what you're looking for. You all are from 
Onyx, and you've grown up there uh, for the most part, I assume. And that's a very specific solution to the problem of uh, this catastrophe zone. But there are other solutions. Don't kind of pigeonhole yourselves is kind of the, the point of this. And um, yeah, kind of feel free to explore a little bit if you'd like. Um, if not, you could feel free to leave. Uh, truthfully, not much to it. Oh, that's right. You needed a cleric. Yeah. So yeah. let's go find Kink. And she kind of. A, 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 another cleric, um, one that can remove curses today. I mean, okay. I pat Marius reassuringly, or I'm just above the hip, you know, where so I can reach. Just to replace me. Uh, I, I pat him on the other side. <laughs> this is getting weird, getting guys. Butt pats. Yeah, this is getting I'm weird. I'm not touching his butt. Excuse <laughs> me. Mm -hmm. Don't good thing Shimmer isn't here, jeez. You're good. Oh, enough. yeah, she would definitely take the opportunity to pat Marius on the butt. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Um, All right. Sorry, Mel. <laughs> As everyone pets Marius, you uh, make your way to the night side of the uh, of this demi plane. And fairly quickly, uh, you kind of begin to feel a little bit disoriented it's not quite nauseous but your balance is kind of off here and you're kind of figuring out that it's just that it's sort of the small uh you know radius of of this fear that you're kind of walking around and uh so it's it, the ground isn't as level as it should be right and you you make your way into the night side uh, of it and kind of going through some some buildings and whatnot. You're you're brought to one building that looks much the same as the others, and uh, Callisto kind of knocks on the door, and you see uh, opening the door a young orcish uh, woman, looks like probably late teens. And kind of looks a little surprised to see you all. I put my hood up a little bit. And Callisto. Daddy spotted a cute girl. <laughs> <laughs> Callisto uh, <laughs> says, uh, Hello, Ovac. Is uh, your mother here? And. Uh, Ovac kind of just kind of like messes with her throat a little bit and opens her mouth and it takes a second and then you hear uh, I think she's in the back somewhere. And Oh, orcs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you see her kind of turn and in profile you see her mouth begins to move and there doesn't seem to be any sound coming out of it except for very randomly there's just like uh, it, uh. and uh you start hearing from <laughs> uh upstairs someone uh walking and comes down you now you see an older orcish woman she's probably like 45 50 um has a lot of uh has some some cleric vestments on and you see the holy symbol of the fisherman uh which is just it's just a, a dock and a fishing pole like <laughs> and uh she kind of is responding to her daughter and it's the same kind of thing. You see them talking to each other and their mouths are moving and then there's just little bits of random just like- I speak oh. Orkish! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god. I love how- he, I, I feel like Gertie just had to take a second like, can I hear this? Do I understand this? I don't know. She's very sick. She's very yeah. sick right now. 
<laughs> I mean, sometimes it takes a second to hear, like, to actually be like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't understand this. Wait, is I'm that like, the giant? No, no, that's orcish. I yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know this, uh, Gertie, because you've had to learn orcish from, from someone. Uh, there's not a lot of orcs uh, on this continent. They're not native to it. And they never had strong alliances with the dwarves um, in past times. And they, they have a strong uh, nation of their own kind of thing. So they, they're, uh, they don't venture out too much. And they find it difficult to converse with the other uh, humanoid species because they communicate their vocal cords primarily produce infrasonic sound. Uh, so most of their vocal range is below human hearing thresholds. Um, so when they are talking to other non-orcs, they're basically having to just like speak in as high a pitch as they possibly can. Oh dear God, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's very uncomfortable. They don't really like deal with it. David, 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 David. This is really fucking cool world building, man. Yep. That's really fucking cool. I love cool. it so much. I appreciate it. All right. So you know Orcish, but you still don't, unless you can read lips, you do not understand what they're saying. Should have taken that observant feet, boo. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they could speak in Orcish to you where you could hear it, but again, it would be like having to yeah. be as high as pitch as they can. So yeah, um, after a little bit of that, uh, the the mother kind of uh, just says, "Well, come on in, everyone." I uh, love how in Orcish that's just like, "Hey, come on in, everyone." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, <laughs> it's just like, Jeez. <laughs> and so someone needs to have a uh, someone needs a, a cleric. I raise my hand. Point at right. her. Uh, well, it's nice to meet you all. My name is Gink. Uh, my daughter, Ovac. Nice to meet both of you. And so, I, I say that in what, Orkish. Oh, Show up. Kind of a... In Orkish kind of responds, we don't meet many that, that take an interest to learn our tongue. It's appreciated. So, uh, what seems to be the problem? I have met a... Um, mommy? And um, I haven't been uh, feeling quite myself. Oh. Okay. Um, sure. My um, friends tried to uh, kill me, but nothing happened. Yes, we've had a few uh, people run have run-ins with with mummies in the past. Uh, yeah, so I guess just wait a second and see. She grabs her her holy symbol and begins to pray. And uh, again, not being able to understand it, as she's not necessarily talking to you. The prayer kind of just cuts in and out. And, uh, yeah. Remove curse is cast. And, uh... <laughs> you, you feel a, something kind of... You don't necessarily feel better because you're still at, like, what, did you have four hit points or something like that? I think nine. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so that wound is still there, but um, kind of, you realize now something was maybe affecting your mood. There's just a, a dark magic that had kind of settled in, and you and it's released. And uh, 
All right. And, uh, she's kind of looking you over. She saw that you had probably a bit of a limp and just kind of places a hand uh, where you were hit in the side and casts Cure Wounds. At... Uh, it's unlikely she'll need to do much more than this, so at, we'll say fourth level. <laughs> oh dang! I rolled so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's three eights and a five. Okay. Damn! Whoa! Yeah, Alex. Like <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Twenty nine plus 29. fucking wisdom. Yeah. So. Uh, I think you're back you, at max. You're thirty three. <laughs> I am back at max. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Nice. No, we're still in. We're not at the entrance. Max is Max is down down there. If it's not Tom, it's you. Like seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get enough pun credit yesterday, so I need to uh-huh. continue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> De nada. So yeah. Um. So feeling better. Um, King Why kind of just be? says, "So that you must be uh, some of the brave hmm, that are looking for From interesting time to time." Yeah, <laughs> it's all in common. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, feel free anytime you need any uh, kind of big, big uh, cleric stuff. I'm not uh, just overly skilled, but strong connection with my god. And if you ever want to hear more about the fishermen, feel free to ask. But uh, I think I'll be getting back to my work, if that's all. I believe it is. For for now, at least. I mean, I, I I'd love to hear some about the fishermen, but I I believe they're, you know, they're things people should be doing probably. Yeah, look, same. Oh, uh, we might. Well, um... no, do I know anything? Sorry, Tom. Do you know anything about the fishermen? <laughs> yeah. Do I know anything? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Can 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 I roll? Like, given my upbringing. Yeah, that's fair. Roll I religion. also want to roll if I can. Sure. Man. Don't don't Ooh. I don't think I've got proficiency, but um, you know. I do. <laughs> um nineteen total. Uh, religion. Oh, that's a at mi- a minus one for me. That's not oh that's a seventeen though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, go team. Yeah, I was gonna Ooh. say my intelligence is plus zero, but I am Traveler. proficient in religion. So yeah, team nineteen. Traveler. Go team traveler. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so... Lore. Yeah. Give uh, that good world lore. Yeah. The fisherman is kind of a god for the commoners, really. It's just kind of a god of day-to-day life, just survival, and, uh, you know... Uh, so he casts a big net. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, it's, domains tend to be, you know, like uh, nature and things of that kind of thing, but uh, is uh, generally considered probably like the most just solidly good god. There's not really like a wrathful side to the fisherman, uh, as opposed to like the mother who's the son. So, you know, gives life and whatnot, but can also, if you get on her bad side, is you, you're gonna have to cook you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do an Icarus as well. Yeah. Mm. Don't do. That Don't fall either. in love with the mother. It'd be bad for you. <laughs> Nathaniel. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's not here. I can throw a shade all I want. <laughs> You'll face her wrath. Uh, not the mother's. Her wrath. Uh... Bring it. Oh, which is worse. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. So. At that, uh, she's that's that's really all there is to the fisherman. There's kind of more nuance to it in terms of 
like doctrine on like how to treat people and stuff like that but that's more like the heavy religious stuff outside of just be like you know be nice provide for your family there's not a lot else to the fish sure. outside of technicality and uh yeah that uh gink is gonna kind of you know say goodbye to you all and goes back upstairs you're not sure what she's doing up there but she's working on something well what was the name of the other uh orc over uh, over and gank yeah it's your great orc names <laughs> mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. yeah uh so yeah uh ovac kind of well um i can how long are you staying i can show you around if you need that would be very lovely much appreciate it can i insight check gertie right now (laughs) because jade knows what's going on maris wants to know Uh, da, 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 da. 12. Ooh, dirty 20. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, do, what does that mean, Gertie? Um, What's a dirty 20 get? <laughs> well, since I rolled it, an It's going to get some dirt on Gertie. Yeah. <laughs> a Gertie 20? A Gertie 20. <laughs> a Ger- Gertie seems interested, and Gertie also says, um, I believe Marius uh, will have a lot of, a lot of questions about your god. So it would be better for you to uh, come with us. Right, Marius? <laughs> uh, what? Well, I... Huh? Sh- sure. Yeah, I have a lot of questions, yes. And I wink at Gert, like really obviously. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, well, yeah. <laughs> now, can I roll an insight on this? <laughs> Thank you. It's going to go away. I'm delivering chocolate. Wow. I'm being the nice person. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a 13. Sorry, I was brought chocolate. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, you do that, and then I'll say the thing I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, so, what did Gritty roll? Like an eight. Oh, eight. Eight oh. plus something. I don't know what the whole oh is. Oh my god. Your oh, deception's okay. quite good. Is it? Okay, give me a sec. <laughs> is Tom's deception quite good? I said Gritty's. <laughs> Tom can't like this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, 13. <laughs> I think I rolled a 13. Hmm. Yeah, so, so you I win. You gain some insights. Thirteens uh so the deception sets the DC, so you made the DC mm. to no. read into the obvious stuff. So yeah. Uh, Gertie uh Gertie. Riz is looking up at Gertie. Um I would say Riz is waggling their eyebrows a little bit, but I don't think really Riz has any eyebrows very much. <laughs> I don't imagine goblins have a lot in the way of eyebrows, so there's definitely some kind of little ridge just going up and down on one mm-hmm. side. Not that Riz has a fucking clue about any of that stuff, but just sort of like, oh, Gertie likes that girl. <laughs> I know what the other kids got up to at the temple. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's basically Mars going like, sure, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I guess this is a thing. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, yeah, there's kind of a silent laugh from Ovac. And, uh, <laughs> oh, no. Sure, I could take you. I, uh, I, I, I kind of go to Ovac and extend my hand, shake a hand. Shake your hand, sure. <laughs> My uh, name is Gertrude Stonetongue. Very nice to meet you. Uh, friends I call look me... at Elias like... <laughs> friends call me uh, Gretty. So... Um, th- this is uh, Riz. Uh, so... Alright. Yeah. They I like to punch stuff. Um... This is Marius. 
Uh, oh, hey. He's very nice. And uh, this is Elias. Uh, they like to sleep in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that in character or out of character? <laughs> <laughs> what wow. Elias? It's true. Can I just mind your own business? I do. I'm just pointing the obvious. Mm -hmm. Apologies. The kind of slight silent laugh becomes like a full on silent laugh. <laughs> And the funniest. So again, like Obex clearly laughing. Like you're seeing the uh, all the movements as if laughing, but there's just no no sound. Because <laughs> well, it's nice to meet all of you. Um, so yeah, I could show you. Is that all right, uh, Callisto? And she kind of says, "Sure." Um, yeah, I probably have some things that I could could uh, get to anyways, so I will leave you all to it. And uh, maybe uh, stop by my office on your way out of town. And she kind of walks off. And uh, yeah. So Ovet kind of leads you guys out of her house and shuts the door. And there's not much to it. You're kind of walking around these cramped streets. Um, it seems like uh, you could maybe fit like a like a wheelbarrow down <laughs> down these things, but it's it's barely even it's barely more than single file uh, to get around on the city side of things. What's the uh, population makeup like in Portal? Is it similar to Onyx? Of what we've seen and people see, like ancestry, like human. I know dwarfs are kind of low, and you've said the orcs aren't massively like prolific here. So what's the what's the makeup like? Uh, so yeah, it's mostly human. They're um, as you're kind of walking around, you're seeing some people out and about. But, uh, and pretty quickly on the tour, uh, Ovet kind of tells you, you know, don't get too loud that uh, mostly these are people who are sleeping. And, um, yeah. So, uh, so you don't see a lot of people out. You do see some, and like I said, they're mostly human. You're also seeing kind of more of uh it's it's a usual population makeup it'd be kind of the same as onyx's uh mm. and there's like a few elves there you know you maybe see one elf while you're there you do see like a couple of dwarves here and there there's some some of that um you see uh quite a few half orcs uh which is somewhat unusual though you know but makes sense they have at least a, enough of an orcish population to have a mother and daughter Mm -hmm. uh, that aren't half works, and uh, outside of that, you're seeing like um, uh, Wanti, you're seeing uh, Minotaurs, lizard folks, stuff like that. Kind of tend to be more the uh, normal uh, in terms of non-human races. Uh, just, you know, halflings. Halflings are kind of there with with uh humans and that they kind of are kind of just everywhere and so you see a, a good amount of halflings some goblins some gnomes but i'd say yeah. i'd say probably about 40 percent of the population is human and the rest is uh, miscellaneous yeah <laughs> the interesting people of the php <laughs> no offense marius hey <laughs> I'm, very I'm, I'm very interesting and uh that's rude yeah eventually kind of takes you over one of the buildings is doesn't seem to be residential it seems to have like a a little uh kind of restaurant in it and you know 
sit you all down and uh I sit next to uh Okay. All right. <laughs> so smitten doesn't even know know our name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just Mrs. Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> I ship it. <laughs> Can we get Tom to be a, a a brighter shade of red by the end of this? Is the question. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's the menu's pretty good. Um, and, you know, OVAC assures you that don't worry, you know, you don't have to pay or anything like that. Um, this is for residents usually, but if you're in here, it's all right. And uh, do you usually stay down here? My mother and I, yes, we usually stay in the um uh, in portal proper we don't have a lot of clerics it's kind of more of i don't know if you've noticed or not but it's kind of more of a uh an arcane kind of place um so we don't tend to go outside and risk ourselves much and battle and things like that people are oh no in no, here no, so no. Can... i meant down here yeah. like in the Magical place. That's what a... she's talking about. Oh. That's what she's talking about. Portal mm. proper is everything within the tower. Is the demi plane? So yeah, don't don't go out a lot. Um, had volunteered to actually go out and and be one of the brave, but was uh, apparently too valuable uh had to stay here but you do not want the break <laughs> okay yeah might end up getting killed by a mimic what a mummy mm-hmm. or you might fall down a, down a set of stairs or you might have to fight like a giant robot snake that you walked off to fight by yourself Thirty floors down. But she survived, you know. It's kind of. <laughs> you, you might get stuck in an endless squabble like this. <laughs> she kind of just kind I mean, of it's great, but smile on her face, just watching it. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, sounds terrible. M- makes you wish you had some popcorn, really. I mean... Or a little. Tiny frog, but you know, <laughs> we we have that though. Yeah. Mm. So can I like see a cow? <laughs> <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Me too. Sure. We could, I'd like to. We could go do that. Like I like I heard about cows being here, and I've like never seen one. So. Sure. Yeah. After lunch. Cool. And, I mean, yeah. the cow's gonna be alive, right? When we see it. I mean, I don't particularly want to bring you to a slaughterhouse, but <laughs> if you would like to see it, <laughs> Ale- Ale- well, I'm not to see the alive. Alayas, do you have any beef with the cow? I'm about to have some beef with you, G- Gertie. I really thought you wanted to be on your best behavior right now, and I just look at. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Riz just sort of leans on the table to look up. Yeah, it's like, (laughs) call the cops. (laughs) I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, I mean, if you, yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. Okay, so you have a nice lunch. Um, uh, Probably, you know. You've had probably some meals like this before in Onyx here or there when, you know, trading has been particularly world. But to see it all just like freely available on a menu is kind of uh, jarring almost. And uh, she brought out uh, kind of walking you back out of the city towards the farm half of the demi plane. 
and explains to you like that the buildings are all the same three stories tall with that that little dome on it that that's the that's as high as the atmosphere gets and things like that and yeah you you find your way to a farm uh it's mostly uh plant life like mostly wheat and things like that um but you do see a small uh herd of of cows kind of grazing are they like normal earth size cows or are they like this is just I'm just for the relative are size of how small cows? No, because <laughs> cows are so, oh, no cows are big. Like mm-hmm. fucking de- yeah. cows are really big. Mm. Cows and you said sure. that and you said that the space was limited, like it was a demi plane, so I didn't know if the cows had been bred to be smaller to fit here or whether they're just like regular earth sized cows. Mm. Good question. Mm. They're pretty regular sized cows. Okay, so <laughs> Riz is like fucking staring up at this cow. Just sort of like <laughs> <laughs> um, David. Mm-hmm. To Please be able to turn, to turn into, into animals. Into a oh my God! <laughs> do you have to like... study them or just see them? Because it says like you can turn into if, animals you've seen. If you've seen them, this is I going can turn into a cow. We'll yeah. have milk. I mean, what? I'm so excited about this. <laughs> this is really going to be really catastrophic. Uh, uh, I guess so. Uh, are, are they like fenced in? Uh, yes. Yeah. They okay, don't want right. getting into the wheat or anything. No, like that's that. fair. Right, then which has Riz is like up on the fence looking very much like they want to go and pl- run around the cow. So Oh no. I haven't yet. I'm just looking like I want to. We really need to put the goblin on a child leash. <laughs> and maybe the the dwarf as well. <laughs> I give Marius the look. I don't say I did not that was Mel's really I was gonna say that was Mel, that wasn't Marius. <laughs> that was it's less of a distinction now because I have a cold, but <laughs> okay. Um uh, uh, Elias is just sort of gonna look at um Ovac mm-hmm. and Ovac. and be like um is it just cows, or do you have any other animals on this plane? So, right now it's cows. Um, there's a herd of sheep in one of the fey planes <laughs> that we kind of go back and forth between. Um, the kind of land area of the farm itself isn't enough to su- support all of our animal life, so we kind of rotate it in and out. Okay. Uh, That's cool. Those are some beautiful cows. Uh, how, okay. How, how do you know if they're beautiful? I feel like you've got nothing, no cows to compare them to, I don't think. It's the first time seeing them. It's beautiful as it is. Druids. <laughs> You know, I'll I'll admit I was not expecting you guys to be this excited about cows. But I haven't met many people not from here, so You'll be surprised you at what we're excited about. Pretty much yeah. anything. I mean, there are a lot of different people out there, so it's always exciting to meet different kinds of them. Especially the Duke like ones. You. <laughs> what you say? Riz tears their eyes away from the cow <laughs> to look at Getty. <laughs> just all slow Simultaneous marches. with probably everybody else in the room. <laughs> <laughs> just three heads. <laughs> You've got the worst people to go having your wingman right now, Getty, just like you wanted Mac for this. Mac <laughs> might have had chill or at least subtlety. <laughs> Shimmer would have just been very obvious about it, but she would have tried, maybe. Like, mm. but <laughs> nope. Um, I'm stuck with the shits. So yeah, like I said, they kind of rotate them in and out. I'm not really knowledgeable about all the wizard wizarding stuff, but I know that whoever had this tower had an extensive 
library. So the wizards we have here are very skilled. So they're, like I said, able to kind of shift between planes and whatnot. But, uh, yeah. Honestly, that's about it. <laughs> it's um, Any kind of exciting stuff happens outside. And we've got about a third of the population sleeping right now. And um, a third outside and kind of on guard duty. And the other third, you know, free time. Seems smart. Mm -hmm. But that's about that's about it about life. So, anything else? I, I honestly can't think of what else I could show. Yeah, Gertie, do you have any ideas? Yeah, Gertie. So how about the fishermen, right? <laughs> Fish. Fish. Yes. Okay. Yeah, do you have fish here? I mean, there's... Yup, the fishermen... I mean, there's gotta be some kind of thing here, right? Good job, Marius. <laughs> Riz is now looking at Marius like... <laughs> I'm just drunk. Like, I don't know. <laughs> nope, there's not a lot of fish. Um... <laughs> We don't have, we don't fish farm. I kind of see that there may be some irony in that. I'm <laughs> uh, a little. Yeah. I just look at, I just look at Gertie, just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I look at Marius. Do something. <laughs> Hey, um, Marius, uh, Lias, do you want to come with me a sec? Uh, look, I just saw something over there that I really want to show you. Is Don't mind cow? us. I we're just look at the cow. I just yeah, like let's... drag her in. <laughs> yeah, let's go look at. I want to get closer to the cow. Come on, Lay, you need to see him up close, right, to learn how to do it. <laughs> Pulling Lay right towards back. the cow. Yeah, right we go, we go, we go towards. The... We, we hop the fence and go look at the cows. Don't, don't startle them. <laughs> oh, we can be quiet. It's fine. They come you have them. a fun time over there. Okay, bye. <laughs> Three of us. Hide <laughs> among the cows. <laughs> that kind of just looks over at you, Curdy, and says, I was not at all prepared by how interested in cows you all would be. Yeah. Um... Mm hmm. <laughs> they like cows. Yes. It's <laughs> kind of just looking down at you. Um. Kind of smiling. So. You are also a cleric? Yep. <laughs> yep, of the fisherman. <laughs> We're helping in the chat. Don't mind us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um thought there there was something magical. <laughs> How smooth are you trying to be with this? Mm. Not at all. I okay. sure have no okay. than your being. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you want to roll persuasion on yeah. that or something? Sure. You can roll, roll for game. Yeah. Gertie can be better at it than you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. oh uh, persuasion, you said. Mm -hmm. uh, Please roll high. I want you to do well. That's a 19. <laughs> hey! Whoa. Cheesy lines work sometimes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, None of us were obvious, like, very subtle about it. <laughs> <laughs> Smiles. Says, 
Oh, thank you. So, um, what do you do outside of being one of the brave? Um, I'm at hiding. <laughs> Not hiding your feelings. And, uh, Ew! Stabbing things out of nowhere. Uh, it's, um... Uh, so kind of the opposite of what I do. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <Whoa>! Opposite to track. <laughs> but... I feel like I'm good at planning. Thinking. Putting things together. We don't really have a leader, mm. but what you think of yourself as one? I would like to. Okay. Well. Good luck. Maybe you should. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Get like a pet cow that seems to motivate these people a lot. <laughs> Motivates us. I, no, I, I might, know. Uh, I I oh, might try to uh, you know paint one of my cloaks to look as a cow. It might. Cow print cloak. Sure. Camouflage. Come. Ah! Uh, mad about everything. I've been sitting on that for a while. <laughs> I feel like we all should have pulled a box mocking and just like hit on anything. <laughs> Give them some privacy. Well, I imagine that we're all just like hid behind one of the cows, just sort of like. Eyes uh, above it, watching this now. Yeah. Mm. Riz is like le basically leaning on top of it, using up a body strength to... <laughs> as the shortest one there. Halfway climbed up onto a cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Cows are chill. You just have to be quiet about it and not freak them out. <laughs> Cows yeah. are chill. Just Cows not too us worried. running away. Yeah. Oh my god. Can a list turn into a cow and move closer? <laughs> move closer? Move closer! <laughs> you can turn into a cow. Uh, cows are not outside of your challenge rating, as it, as it turns out. <laughs> We're good. So, you're, so everyone's no. kind of found like a cow kind of that's a little <laughs> bit away from the main group, so as you're not too worried about like being stampeded and stuff. You're just turning into a cow and just going. Yeah. Like, I might as well right. eat some grass on the way. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to blend in here. I'm I'm the druid. I do the stuff. So the grass is is pretty uh trim. It seems that it, you know, gets uh uh it's eaten pretty pretty much down to the roots constantly, but there are some mm -hmm. feeding troughs and whatnot around. Not gonna eat from those. No, I have standards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> They're very low, but I still have them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting, but important distinction. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's <laughs> yeah, happening. Uh, <laughs> Are we doing what you want us to do yet? <laughs> mm. Oh, you. You know it. I was totally expecting an impromptu date in the middle of this. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, what do you do? I, I don't know help. what this... And, uh, that's how you put them up, huh? So... <laughs> <laughs> Dave, this is how David kills Tom. This is. <laughs> this is the end. Uh, mostly just help out my mom, kind of learning the ropes, uh, study a lot of studying. And 
Yeah. Not much else to it. <laughs> Have a few friends. We eat at the restaurant sometimes. I don't know. Not a lot. Sounds like a good life. Mm -hmm. oh my God. <laughs> Did you draw that like real quick right now? <laughs> Why does just look, just look on Twitter? <laughs> uh, that honestly looks really good, actually. <laughs> uh, Share that on Twitter, please. People need to see this. I'll put it in chat. Don't yeah. worry about it. All right. Oh, don't so... worry about it. <laughs> well, um, I don't want to keep you any longer than I have. I, I'm bad at this. I'm sorry. What's What's this? What are you bad at? Gertie. Talking? Yeah, what are you? Talking. Socializing? Hey, you gotta put those up, remember? We talked about that. <laughs> hey, Lay, please, please turn into, to like, a crustacean and go, Shala. <laughs> 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 Oh, the yes. rogues are shy to get this. Shall la 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 don't want to keep you any any longer than I have to. If you ever in the neighborhood again, you know, feel free to stop by. Love to see you and your friends again. Maybe next time there will be sheep here, and you can all freak <laughs> out over that. <laughs> in Orkish. Are you dating anyone? <laughs> okay. Gertie's gonna Hi. have a girlfriend in every fucking town. High or low? Oh god. Oh my god. Low. I'm a dwarf. I go low. <laughs> she kinda smiles and in orcish not at the moment you <gasps> no i um uh, left my old life behind. Hmm. oh my well that seems sad um sorry it's okay <laughs> At least I oh. got to meet you. <laughs> At least, yes. So, uh, yeah, come, you and your friends. <laughs> Next time you're here, we'll get some of my friends together and we'll have, you know, a proper night of it. But, uh, sounds like fun. I probably do need to get back to my studies. Yeah, I do. If you wouldn't mind um, calling your friends back, I... <laughs> yelling in a way that you all can can hear me is somewhat difficult. Hey, hey, you, you can come back. <laughs> Just uh, you see a cow with fingers on top of it. <laughs> you can come back. Move. I like wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad this is too long to make one one clip off. <laughs> this entire episode is just a clip. <laughs> Everything's better with cows. <laughs>
tell them that. But yeah, having been having back. yeah having been called back, we'll come I'll come back over. Are you look right. expectantly. Does, has that, is Ovac still with Gerdy, or has Ovac kind of walked off? Uh, still there. Yeah. Okay. Won't say anything yet. So I can show you guys out, and uh, as I was telling Gertie, next time you all are in town, stop by and you know get some friends together, and we'll hang out, kind of have some drinks and whatnot. That'd be Looks great. Thank you. Yeah, and I oh. look disappointedly at Gertie. I just, I just smile with too many teeth. Because <laughs> you, you smile at people when they say <laughs> nice things, apparently. <sighs> it's very Stitch in Lilo and Stitch. Thing. <laughs> oh, cute. Oh. Goes, goes too wide, too many teeth. And unlike Stitch, where at least all the teeth are in the mouth, <laughs> like Riz has a touch of the angler fish about their teeth. Oh, oh no. my god, yes. So good. Great for eating raw meat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, Ovac takes you back out. Uh, the guard opens the door again. I. Oh, go on. Go ahead. No, no, you, you go on. Okay, it takes him takes him a second to open the door. It seems to be a bit of a process. Has to send word to the uh, out to the other side of the uh, gate that it will be opening, and uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, Ovax kind of there. And goes, so uh, next time, then I go to shake her hand again. All right, she shakes her hand. And you have very. Uh... Soft hands. <laughs> oh, right. Tom, I feel like we need to have a conversation about all of this. <laughs> Give me another oh, persuasion god. check. Oh god. How is it a straight persuasion check? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to use one of my DM inspirations. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Tom. Oh, even worse. Oh no. my god. <laughs> um well, you had expertise in the equation. Uh 13. 13. Oh wait, do I? I thought you did. No. I have a de deception. <laughs> apparently. Uh, well, we'll teach you to try uh, to be honest about your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Uh <laughs> valid. Mood. No. <laughs> yes. Kind of, kind of gives you like a a slow nod and says, "Thank you, Gertie." Um. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Um. Catch you later. Lay you. You have. You're no longer a cow, right? Okay. Oh yeah. No. After I, I she turned back. Oh, the, so I... they turned back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just wanted the. There was going to be a lot of questions. With the <laughs> cow out with them. Yeah. But... <laughs> we tried to steal a cow. Grand <laughs> 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 beef. If anyone, if anyone Grand... says like, yeah, if anyone mm. says like, you know, no, you got to return the cow. The cow will just go no, move, no, move, move. Grand move. beef auto. <laughs> move. <laughs> All right, and you're back out. You kind of make your way out through the tower again. Um, a little bit easier to get out this time. There's not as much uh, scrutiny from security, and uh, you've kind of you find your way back out into the uh, the marketplace of Portal. I'll just grab my weapons and just go. Now, now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a flat. Was just the nearest one to bang my head against for a second, and I'll just <laughs> so uh, Gertie. Oh, Riz, you should get that girl a rock, like a pretty one. <laughs> People like pretty rocks, you can put them on like your window, or you like next to your bed, or you can keep them in your pocket. Like a little piece of you to 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 leave with people that you want to think about you. 
Plus, everybody likes a pretty rock. Actually, not a bad idea. I pat her on the cheek. Just, like, I'm a fountain of wisdom, and I walk off to get my <laughs> stuff from back. <laughs> oh, and then I turn around as I walk back. I go literally, and I flash the. Uh, I don't set it off. <laughs> I point at the I point at the dwarf stone in my hand, <laughs> and then go back to. I go back to Mac to get my stuff. <laughs> Get my stuff back too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anything else you guys are wanting to do in uh in, in portal? portal? No, I think we did all our shopping. Sorry, we have to go uh, back Mary to the mayor. Right. The mayor. On your way out. Oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, that's on the way out. Way out. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Nate? I had made a point that I wanted to go see Mr. Magic Man, Catharac. Oh, about your frog. Oh, yeah. About my frog. Okay. My frog problem. My froglum. Let's, let's go to Mr. Magic Man, because that it's seems totally kind of fine. Let's hop over yeah. there. That's a big swing no. in my vocal range, you guys. Catharac <laughs> <laughs> will be quite pleased. Yeah. yeah. It'd be great. All right. We'll be Mm -hmm. So yeah, you make your way over to Catherax. Ribbit, ribbit. Uh, you've been inside already, right? No. No? It's okay, so... Time. That's why we're going. Uh, the tent is... As you go in, it, the interior looks more like a building than a tent. Mm -hmm. And there are shelves and uh, cabinets that, you know, glass cabinets that display items and things like that. And behind the... Uh, the uh, kind of counter is a very well-dressed drow in kind of pastel purple and blue uh, ruffle uh, white shirt kind of comes out of the sleeves, kind of the ruffle white uh, V kind of vest or uh, shirt kind of thing going on. And this enormous kind of three musketeers hat with this giant uh, purple feather coming off of it. And uh, what is your... Passive perception. Um, I will tell you in just a minute. And I get to the right top seventeen. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you notice um just very briefly as he kind of uh sees you come in, kind of uh face begins to kind of like engage and like, oh, I'm going to talk to a person mode. He very briefly like looks like a small tail, kind of go behind him and hide. Oh. And it's uh, very thin and ends in kind of like a spade <laughs> from uh, okay. like a deck of cards. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do I know if that's coming from him or from a different unit? It looks to be his. <laughs> what a okay. phrase. <laughs> Is it his tail or a different unit? <laughs> we do need an adult. Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, I walk up to the gentleman. Mm -hmm. Can I just? Why, hello, Catheract is quite pleased to do business with you today. What would your name be? My name, uh, Elias. Pleased Hello. to meet you, Elias. Same with you. You're you might be the first draw I've ever met on the surface. Well, anywhere, really. Hmm. Catheract is honored. So then, Elias, what can Catheract do for you today? Right, uh I actually uh forgot for a second. Um so my friends and I were in um in this large uh, old building and we uncovered some uh items in locked boxes and one of them was actually this one and I pull out the frog in a box. It's a frog. And I sort of like hold <laughs> I hold it kind of like in front of me for a second. Uh it's weird. Um, there's a frog in this. 
but it's kind of a different dimension, I think. Um, it doesn't like it when it's pulled out of the box, but every now and again, uh, we see the frog doing something else in a different place. It's weird, and when it moves, it's always in the box, and um, just look. And I open the box and show him. All right, and you see your bearded, bushy-eyebrowed frog in a business suit. Uh, has his array of kind of papers out in front of him and seems to be writing on them and kind of stops him and looks up. Hi there! Hello! How's it going? <laughs> You're fantastic. It's just riveting keep at you. You keep working. <laughs> it's fine. Don't don't mind us. Kind of like... We're good. Looking He's up fine. At you. Goes back to work and kind of looks back up now and again. <laughs> I just sort of salute. It's fine. You see what I'm talking. Catherine hasn't seen one of these in years. Can you? Um, and as I'm like holding the box thing open, I just sort of goodbye. Can you tell me what exactly one of these is? Catherine isn't sure exactly who made it, but it's one of the portable dwarven banks. Excuse me? How much money is in there? <laughs> I'm not gonna rob a frog! <laughs> we are gonna rob a frog. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you do not know this. What happens if you turn the box upside down and just shake it? <laughs> no. the frog After taking question. the frog out. After taking the frog out. Sorry, please continue. So, uh, what, what was that exactly? It's a Portable Dwarven Bank. Uh, Catherine isn't quite sure exactly where to start with it. They're a rather odd item, but um, so effectively the frog in this case. It's not always a frog. <laughs> we have our own laugh track. <laughs> <laughs> sort of runs the bank. You can deposit things with the frog, and you can have them brought back out to you. Really? Um, is there a limit as to how much uh, stuff we can deposit into the bank? There is. There's something of a charge for storing um, things, renting space oh. and whatnot. Fucking banks. <laughs> and if you were to open an account, you would need to deposit money at regular intervals. <laughs> and um, what would be the benefit of uh, depositing money in a thing like this? Well, it keeps the money safe keeps the item safe, and opening an account is the only way you can put items in it. I mean, how's it different from a bag of holding? There isn't exactly a limit to the number of things that can be stored, or the oh. amount of space. As long as it's a legal item that the, uh, the bank does not recognize as contraband, then it can be stored. No, two questions. Uh, the first would be, is there a way to communicate with the frog? Because I turned into a frog myself and that didn't work. I tried to cast a, uh, cast a spell to try and speak with animals and that didn't work. Um, when I tried to go into the box, it offered me a drink. That was weird. Um, so, Ketherak has never found a way to communicate with whatever the avatar of the bank is. It seems to simply be an intelligence designed to interact with people in a rudimentary level. But it doesn't seem to have any kind of language that it actually speaks. The paperwork doesn't actually mean anything. It's sort of just a mockery of of uh, a banker's life. This is David's um, critique of capitalism right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 um... The 
second question would be if we were to go inside much like I went in uh, as a frog would we be able to explore the place or are we confined in the area that we can see? Without knowing the exact spatial coordinates to plane shift to the bank, Ketherak doesn't think you could explore it. The briefcase is not the bank. As I said, the frog is simply an avatar for it, and the briefcase contains it. Okay. Do you know if the bank has, like, some sort of investment thing where if you put money into it, they'll add into it or something like that? Likely does. It depends on the bank. <laughs> Just head over to IVQ or something. HSBC. Right, that's uh, interesting. That's not what I thought this would be. Um, on the list of things of, on the list of possibilities that I thought this would, you know, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you for telling me about it. Um, <sighs> I'm going to table this for now, and I'll take it, and I'll put it in my bag again. Okay. I'm trying to think about what the hell I'm going to do with a froggy bank. <laughs> Piggy bank, froggy bank. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, Smash after it, that, really. I just, yeah, I, after that, I, um, I look around the shop, and I say, you have plenty of magical goods, as I hear. Ketheract is well supplied, yes. Um, so I'm not exactly like a wizard or anything like that. I don't really benefit from, um, you know, staves and the such. I mean, I cast spells, but not mainly. I turn into beasts. Do you have anything that's good for people who turn into beasts? <laughs> like, <laughs> Ketherak wonders, do you mean for when you are a beast or simply good for people that are able to do such things like druids? Well, I am a druid, and yeah, things for when I am a beast. Because it's kind of limited based off of the animal I can turn into. If I can do more, that would be, you know. Ketheract could provide you with some magical horseshoes. What would those do? They would let you run faster. Oh. Um, that's interesting. Is there anything that would help me attack more or more powerfully or something? Ketherak doesn't have anything like that at the moment. He could look for it for you. You could uh, have it delivered at some future point if it's found. Okay, would that, um, does that have any cost or charge or anything? To Ketherak. ask for that? want a deposit based on the assumed price of the item oh um okay well let's table that for now as well so many tabling things uh how much would the horseshoes be uh, oh, sorry david no worries. The impromptu magic item request no worries Please don't take out a contract that would require us to kill three drow maiden ma matron mothers. That would suck. Oh yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's for Reese, the dumbass. That seems like a really unlikely thing to happen, Mel. I yeah. don't know where you would pull that situation out yeah, of nowhere I, I from. Yeah, I don't know either. It just came to me. I just suddenly that was I like the one fear meme. <laughs> <Where was it? laughs> one, one fear. No fear. One fear. Nairi taking out another contract. <laughs> Oh, we have no fears, Nato. Wait, yeah. it was Nairi that one took fear. out the first one. Yeah, so kind of it was. Jesus well, Christ, Nairi. A Cree like four years ago, or three, two years ago, Jesus. But mm -hmm. yeah, two and a half. But oh, Nairi. Oh yeah. You make choices, and that's a good thing in D and D. It's oh, always interesting. You sure make choices. I think that's my second contract with him too. Hmm. I think it was, but this one sucks because we all have to do it. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> let me just let, let us just this, kill three daughters oh, of the gods. It's fine. This is totally fine. Ketherak could sell you these horseshoes for 2,000 gold pieces. Oh, uh, 
you know, uh, that's gr that's a great number. Um, I don't suppose you'd be tr willing to trade things with that. Like maybe if I were to give you some valuable stuff. Sure, Ketharact is willing to barter. Um, and I guess I pull out the rest of the um, uh, valuable stuff I had, which isn't really all that much. It's just one. Um, no wait. Three lamps made of precious metals and one small golden sculpture. And one with gemstones in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those. So five stuff, really. And I see if he'd be willing to, like, trade off with those. If not, then I'll... Cataract yeah. could... With the trade of these, he would be willing to perhaps accept a payment of a thousand gold pieces. Hmm. Okay. What well, about a soul? Uh, <laughs> oh. Cataract would be about... willing to sell this to you for your soul. <laughs> yeah. How about I take perhaps out a, a black contract? Coming. No, um, <laughs> they don't say that. Um, <laughs> they just fully totally start. <laughs> putting uh, the stuff back. Well, maybe in the future when I actually have that much gold, I can bring it to you, but uh, for now, it's good Ket to know. Catharact is always willing to help the odd adventurer out in their, their struggles. What do you if mean? you would be willing to perhaps do a task for Ketharak. <laughs> do it! I, uh, None of us I, are there! None of us are I'm there! I'm so Seriously? upset. We're not there. Hang nope. on. This is I'm for so my upset benefits. Nairi's a no metagaming kind of person, and I am hurt. E, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> she says, not looking at all, sorry. <laughs> mm. No, I rolled a d20 to see if whether or not Elias would accept it, and higher was going to be no, lower was going to be yes, and I rolled lower. Mm -hmm. What did you roll? Six. <laughs> Solidly lower, yeah. Yeah. What kind of task would you be wanting me to do in, as a trade for it? Ketharact has a few things that could be done in this region. Let's see. So would you be trading the items and then the contract making up the rest of the payment, or would you like to keep those items and the contract be the full payment? What would be the difference? Would it be the same contract, or... The difference would be, would be a... the difficulty of the task that Ketharat gives you. Don't make okay, us go well, to Eternal City. I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the items... Um, and make it the, you know, lesser payment. But can I know what I have to do for that first before I accept? Ketharact is willing to promise that it would not be anything that would break your moral code. And that... With something like this, Ketharact would be reasonably confident in your ability to achieve it. <laughs> Can I incite that to see if he's he like he means that or not? Sure, sure. Yeah. What's your insight modifier? Get yeah, this motherfucker. Um, as high as it is, it won't help. Nine. Oh, <sighs> fuck. He's hard to read. <laughs> I've got a bit of an eagerness about him, but that mm. seems to be pretty par for the course. Uh. Hasn't really like been an uptake in how eager he is since you've walked in. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um. If only Reese were here. Yeah. You know that sounds fair. All right. And kind of with a flourish of his uh left hand, you see a red contract kind of appear. <laughs> and. <laughs> 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 Holds it out, and uh, then with kind of like a quick flick of his uh, right hand, you see a quill, and he just says, Ketharak would ask you to sign here. Okay. 
You don't have the right qualification. <laughs> Flashback to me like three minutes ago. Hey, Nari, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Flashback to you minutes ago. I don't meta game. Yeah, I know. It hurts me. I tried. I took all the steps. I tried. <laughs> I um, rolled one die. Yeah. The <laughs> basis of this game is that we are dumbass teenagers. That's I know, the it point. Hurts me. Um. Yeah. Alea signs the contract, David, because Alea is a dumbass and doesn't know Catheract. And uh, the contract and Quill kind of disappear. And Catherac says, Catherac is happy to do business with you. And she kind of brings out four horseshoes and gives them to you. Just fuck us up, David. How do I use this? Or these? You would attach them to the bottom of your feet, much like normal horseshoes when you are a, a horse. <sighs> oh, it's only for horses. <laughs> Catherine would not suggest putting them on your feet and hands. I, I thought I had the aid intelligence. <laughs> Take more useless magic item. Oh, oh my god. This is, no, this is great. This is great. Is it? This is great. <laughs> Tom. Tom is a mood. <laughs> I'm so sad gifts don't have sound, or else I'd want that. <laughs> and kind of reaches under uh, the counter, and he brings up a uh, kind of gold and blue birdcage. And inside Ooh. you see a crystalline blue egg. Oh, fuck me. And just kind of gives it to you and says, Ketherak would like you to take care of this until it matures. Until it what? Matures. Yeah, the oh. thing now. Another one. <gasps> Another one? No. I am the ultimate druid, you guys. All just the animals. Yeah. yeah, sure. Ultimate druid just bought horseshoes. <laughs> 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 Just, just stop horsing her out, man. <laughs> I say nay to that, Mel. Ah! <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, so the ooh. bird egg is a little bit smaller than like an ostrich egg. Um, okay. The legendary um, Pokemon. Uh, when it matures, do I bring it back to you, or do what do I do with it? Catherine would just ask that you keep it safe until it is able to leave you of its own volition. Oh, and um, do I? Yeah, do I know what this is? Why uh, did you ask? Roll me an arcana. I, I want to know if I know it first. It's, but it's I fine. Ask. We'll just we'll just put Lay on a bike. Find some like like just a long map. Fifteen. <laughs> You're not sure. Can I ask exactly what kind of an egg this is? It produces something of a magical bird. Oh. Uh, a Catherine dang... is quite proud of it. It's one of his own design. It will make its way to its eventual. Oh. All right. Okay. And um. I'm assuming living thing doesn't go in the bag of holding. That's fine. I can carry it around. Um, any tips on what to feed it when it hatches? I'll feed it you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll nail your horseshoes to your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll pounce. Catherine would suggest that you feed it small amounts of meat. It will grow rather quickly and should be able to hunt for itself somewhat afterward. Okay. None of those alarming statements. You None should of perhaps chew up the uh, 
the food first. All right, yeah, like Catherine Mother suspects young... people like squirrels, but he is unsure. Okay. Can it be cooked? Smoked. Tetherak thinks that you would be allowed to cook the squirrel. He would not ask you to chew up raw squirrel. That seems okay, a bit good. harsh. A little. That seems a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and um, final question, just the last one that I need to know. Uh, does it will it have a name, or can I name it something, or is it just hey bird? Tetherak suggests you name it. He hasn't named it. Bad decision. All right. Okay, yeah. Um, I'll take care of it. And uh, thank you for the horseshoes. Catheract is always happy to do this. Well, then, until next time. Yeah, um, I'll see you around. Thank you. I'll start heading out. All right. Sure hope they're lucky horseshoes. <laughs> hey. Okay, so you have horseshoes of speed. So uh, how much speed exactly? They increase a horse's uh, speed by 30 feet. Sweet. 30 sweet. Excellent. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm happy with this. You don't know when a horse can come in handy. Mm -hmm. So some somehow, so, like Marius just senses something weird has happened. He just hits his head a few more. <laughs> and We're gonna really. have to fuck. You're gonna have to fucking turn into a horse, and we attach them to you <laughs> while you're a horse. Do you have, have some nails off, for us? But we'll have to take them off before you shift back. If you fucking get bamfed out of horse form while wearing magic horseshoes nailed to you, I have no <laughs> idea what that will do to you. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, can we can we get you some special gloves that you attach them to? Or we'll they, need to have a talk about this. Would they be nailed under your nails since like Oh, oh uh, man, you are the worst. I mean, I know, I, I know hooves are basically like nails, like it's keratin, it's the same thing. So that's why it doesn't hurt horses to have horseshoes put on. It super hurts people. <laughs> yep! We've got small nails. So David, <laughs> um, can I attach it to myself since it's a magic item? Or does it have to be manually attached by someone like regular horseshoes? Uh, so they are like regular horseshoes. You will have okay. to attach them as you would normal horseshoes, which I mean, you better get proficient in fucking animal handling. Can't do as a horse. Yeah. Not have the necessary. <laughs> Just look at my hoof. Well, you could <laughs> you could actually prepare the nails in the horseshoes and then step, step on them. Step on. <laughs> This is literally this... turning into that John Mulaney bit. There is a horse in the hospital. There is a horse in cataract <laughs> shop. Yeah. There's... I will literally stomp you to death with my hooves. This there is no way. It is absolutely canon. This this party shares a collective two brain cells. Oh, and they have none of them. <laughs> All right, Fuck. well, as you go to join your friends and you uh, figure out what's the next step, uh, we'll just go ahead and call it there since we're down two people. I don't want to fast forward them out of uh, out of the, the city if they don't want to. So you'll probably be leaving early next session, though, and uh, figure out where we want to go from here. I think we have, I think you guys have a plan for the most part. Yeah, we have a direction. We? We? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. we talked about heading um, north west, but via that mine. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you have a few stops to make along your eventual research, dwarven research facility, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, until then, two weeks. Yeah. Um, hopefully, um, uh, Second Breakfast Club. Hopefully we'll be running on Friday, depending on whether Mike is uh, back in good health and able to run a game for us. Yeah. Same applies for Mondays. Clouds of Sean, whether he'll be back, though, game will be running. Um, please keep an eye on the Twitter because um, 
daylight savings kicking in it kicks in in the states on the 10th and not and it's like two weeks later in the uk and europe so it's going to fuck I with our schedules three. yeah it's, it's two three weeks, weeks this, this it's time, three weeks i think, I think I, either way yeah. it's a shit ton of time and it's a pain in the ass because we have a certain amount of inflexibility with time schedules moving but we will keep people posted it might be the case we have shorter game sessions We'll see what we can do. We will keep people posted because we want to try and keep providing content and keep the stories going as much as we can. But it's going to be a bit weird from that, like the 10th of February, which is a Sunday. So 11th of February from until about the end of February. Basically. February is going to March. March is going to be a mess. Yeah. We'll see. Just Meanwhile, like this game. <laughs> thank you, David. Yeah, but thank you, David. That was a delightfully ridiculous oh, session. Man. Thank you for doing that wide array of voice for us. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. thank you for that. My that was very fun. Range of voices. <laughs> no, it was good. Yeah. Very different vibes. Very good. Nice. Thanks yeah. for badly flirting, Tom. Oh, You're welcome. It was very fun. Yeah. <laughs> they might be the end of me. Until, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, until next time. It's very amusing. Fuck's sake. Please save me. Save me. <laughs> Kawabanga. Thanks for the rockers. Bye.